No one said, what do we want for co-sponsor? Okay. What do we want now? Who do you want? That's Bill. <laughs> so, um, I'm guessing you don't want to be on camera, right? Yeah. Um, can you still talk about, uh, not filming you, but I can hear your voice. I don't want to hear that. The grounds are reasonable. In a democracy, the people ideally have a body that will protect them from exploitation and provide a redress of grievances. And that is the government. The problem is that the politicians cannot be trusted to ensure that justice is done. I'm going to repeat that because it's a very important point. In matters concerning the financial sector, we cannot depend on the American politicians to ensure that justice is done, which is a very sad state of affairs. We saw this most strikingly with the ballots. Bank of America and some of the companies told us that they were so big that they controlled such an enormous amount of money in the economy that though they had engaged in risky money-making schemes, that the free market would have to be suspended and the taxpayers would have to rescue them from failure. Their failure, they claimed, would plunge the American economy and many other economies besides in the decades of Dickensian Square. This was indeed a credible threat. It's a pretty happy sword of Damocles to hold over the heads of the American people. And so the bank successfully exhorted the Congress on behalf, on our behalf, for trillions of dollars. The bank's counterpart in the Senate during the writing of the financial regulation reform was Chris Dodd, erstwhile Democratic uh, Senator from Connecticut, whose top three lifetime campaign contributors were, in ascending order, the American Bankers Association, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Bank of America. Dodd's successor, the current chairman of the Senate Banking Committee, is Tim Johnson, Democrat of South Dakota, whose top campaign contributor was the American Bankers Association. So we cannot fight exploitative banks in the Congress because the lawmakers are bought and paid for wholly owned subsidiaries of the financial sector. Instead, we have to fight the banks on their own terms, and that language they speak is profits. We need to undermine their profits, and we're starting to see results. The majority of marketing and communications executives of financial services firms said that the Occupy movement has impacted their business uh, according to a recent study from a firm that specializes in financial services. Their study concluded that the number one challenge for firms this year is dealing with the negative public perceptions that we've highlighted. The more that we emphasize their nefariousness, the less esteem the public holds for them, the more their revenue is threatened, the tighter our chokehold on them becomes, the greater leverage we have to correct their behavior. And it has to be this way because, as Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without demand, it never has and it never will. In that same speech he told us, the whole of history of the progress of human liberty shows that all concessions yet made to her august claims have been born of earnest struggle. If there is no struggle, there can be no progress. So we struggle. The sides are clear. On one hand, the corporations of the world, and on the other, several thousand citizens. We might not be able to conquer these corporations, but if we do, it will be because we made their lives a living hell. So the question is, are we prepared to give them hell? Yeah! They say cut back! We say fight back! 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 Good job! Come on, 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 come on,
I paid 16% more taxes on my small business this year than I did last year. Mm. Isn't that horrible? And yeah. not only horrible. that, not only did they take our money, not only did they buy their cars, did they buy themselves planes and jets and nice fancy dinners, but they're also really good at buying off our politicians. Oh. Who here is familiar with Alec? Oh. Oh. Right? Oh. Right. Oh. Alec Baldwin? Yeah, Alec Baldwin. No, uh, different you Alec. <laughs> you know, they make more freaking bonuses. They want their employees to give back some more money to them. Right? Yeah. To work for less. What, are they going to for? work for less? Hell no. And neither are we. Sounds like greed. Yeah, a little bit of greed. Um, Alec, the American Legislative Exchange Council. Right? Council or commission? Yeah, council. They buy our politicians. They make our laws. A really, really big member of Alex is Bank of America. They spent five million dollars on political contributions in one year. Seventeen million dollars on lobbying in one year. If you add up all their salaries right here, I doubt it would be half of that. Yet they to use that money to influence our politicians to buy our politicians. To buy them, yes. And, like you said, $29 million for their CEO salary and then a nice hefty bonus. So they can't buy the job to pay their taxes. They don't give a penny back to the Treasury. They don't give a nickel to our teachers, to our firefighters, to our police departments right here. To our postal workers. To our postal workers, to anybody. That's why I'm here. I'm angry. I'm upset. That's why my voice is raspy and sir. But again, our message is simple. Before you cut Head Start, before you cut scholarships for hardworking students, before you cut heating assistance or cooling assistance for hardworking families, before you give one more police officer the pink slip, before you fire one more teacher, let's make sure the rich is the richest corporations play by the same rules and pay their fair share in taxes. Yeah! Chop yeah! from the top, not mom and pop. Chop 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 from the top, not mom and pop. Oh, no, 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 no,